You know, I want to talk about something so important, and I really want to break this down because, and we're going to talk a little bit about a, a couple parables that Jesus began to speak of. The first thing that we're going to talk about is seed. What is seed? In its most basic form, seed is something that inside of a seed is hidden a fruit. What is seed? I believe every word that we speak is a seed. Everything that we say is a seed. Whether we are saying it directly or indirectly, it's a seed. With that premise and with that notion, with understanding that words are seed, this is why the Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. Why? Because there's, there, there, there's life and there's death. There's seeds that create life and there's seeds that will kill and create death. Our words are seeds that begin to birth things out in our experience. And Jesus begins to reveal to us a lot about seed and he begins to make uh, uh, a comparison because during the time of that culture, for the, when he taught parables, they lived in an agricultural society. So when he would explain things, to many of the people, he would use agricultural terms so that the other, so that the, in, the individuals and the people would be able to understand the comparison when he explained the kingdom of God, when he explained the heavens and how the kingdom of God works. The first thing that we need to understand is what is the kingdom of God? Well, the kingdom of God is God's kingdom. As a believer, we do not operate in our own kingdom, the kingdom of man, the kingdom of the government, we operate by a higher kingdom, which is the kingdom of God. That's why when the Jews asked Christ and they said, well, what, what, where are you from? From, from, from who? And he says, my kingdom's not here. Why? We operate from a higher kingdom, which is the kingdom of God. And understanding kingdom principles will allow us to begin to be walking in the blessing or to walk not in the blessing. The kingdom principles is not based on personality, it's based on principle. It is the more so the principle of Christ and the mystery of Christ and not the history of Christ. Here in Matthew chapter 13, I want to start in chapter 13, then we're going to kind of, we're going to kind of jump around here. But I want to start in uh, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 1, and the Bible begins to declare something. And those that are watching, if you don't have a Bible, just read along with me and it's going to pop up on the screen for you to see. <clears throat> the same day went and Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside and a great multitude were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat sat the whole multitude stood on the shore and he spake many things unto them in parables saying behold a sower went forth to sow and when he sowed some seeds fell by the wayside and then fowls came and devoured them up some fell upon the stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of the earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. This is very interesting because Jesus begins to talk about an individual that is a sower. Now, when Jesus opened up the blind man's eye when, when he was healing the blind man, he opened up his eyes. The, the Bible says that he began to see us as trees and then God began to pray for him again and his eyes opened up and he began to see man. We are sowers. We are sowers. Everything that we do, we sow. We're sowing a seed. Some people in some belief systems, they like to call it karma, which I don't really call it that. But what I like to call it is that we are bind by our words, which are the seeds that we throw and the seeds that we sow. So here he begins to say, behold, a sower went forth to sow. Now, whether the sower had good intention or bad intention, the scripture is not clear. But what we do know is that he was a sower. And the key here that God is, that Jesus is trying to place us in is that he's talking about habitation. He's talking about placement. He's talking about places where you are and where you sow. So here, the Bible says, behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, he didn't say it was bad seed, so I assume that this was good seed. He says that when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. The first thing that he begins to let us know is that 
Be careful with your words and what you say and who you say it and who you say it around. You have to remember that when we speak to God, we have a heavenly language that we speak to God. Why? Because when we speak to God in our heavenly language, the enemy can't understand what we're saying. Satan cannot understand what we're saying. So when he says that when you sow, he says, just don't let this thing fall on the wayside so that others things that, are, that, 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 that other things, the foul things of the flesh can come and take it. That's the first key that he says. The first thing that he says is that is that he's teaching us, be mindful of where you sow. Be mindful where you drop your seed from. Verse four, and he sowed some seed and fell on the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them up. Here's the second thing that Jesus says. Some fell upon verse five, Matthew chapter 13, verse five. Some fell upon the stony places where they had not much earth and forthwith and sprung up and because they had no deepness of the earth. Here he says, you're not, you have to be rooted. That's the other key. You have to be rooted. It's not just enough to have good seed, but you have to be rooted. If you sow good seed, but you're not rooted in your faith and rooted in your belief system, it'll spring up. You won't reach, reap a harvest. Why? Because you're not rooted. It's not just enough to have good seed. It's not just enough just to believe. You have to be rooted in Christ. We are trees of righteousness. We have to be rooted in his word. We have to be rooted in what he calls us to be. We have to be rooted in all the things that he wants us to do. We have to be rooted in his will. We have to be rooted in, in prayer. All of these different things help us to become rooted because if we're not rooted, we will waver. And when we waver, it's because there's not enough root. So here, the second thing, the first thing he says, the first issue was that they were irresponsible with the seed. That's the first issue. Jesus is talking about responsibility. Some fell on the wayside. They were irresponsible and they lost seed because they were irresponsible with what God gave them. That's the first thing. The second thing that he says is that when you sow, you have to be rooted. If you're not rooted in your faith, then it'll spring up and you won't reap the harvest. God gives words to people. How many times have you heard or have you seen biblically speaking and also speaking in general with people that you know that have gotten a word or God has said something to them and, and, and you concur and you feel it, but yet you didn't witness it because you're not, rooted in, you're not rooted in your faith. You're not rooted in your word. A wind can come and it can toss you aside and you'll just leave the Lord. Why? Because you're not rooted in your faith. So here, in verse 5, it talks about some fell upon the stony places where they had not much earth and forthwith and they sprung up because they had no deepness of the earth. They were not deep. They were not, they were not feeding on the meat of the word. They did not have a true relationship with God. They were not able to be rooted in their faith. And here's the key here when you're rooted in your faith. The enemy can come and cut off a branch. You can cut off the leaves. But if a tree is rooted, you have to cut it from the bottom to get rid of it. When you're rooted, these different things that try to come to cut us up, to break us down, will not be able to succeed. Why? Because you're rooted in your faith. Here's the other one. Verse 6, Matthew chapter 13, verse 6. And when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root, so they withered away. There it goes, and they withered away. Verse 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. <clears throat> what are the thorns? Are there individuals around you that are thorns? Are there people around you that are thorns that, that every time you're about to do something, you, are you tossing seed? Are you tossing your pearl among swine, as the Bible would say? What are you saying there? And you can place good seed, but place it in the wrong atmosphere, and it would kill it. It will kill, literally, something that was supposed to produce a harvest because you're around things or situations that choke it. The thorns can be people. The thorns can be things that are going through your life. The thorns really are sin. That's what the thorns are. It's sin. Sin is the thorns. So when you sow seed, you have to make sure that you're in a right standing with God, righteousness, and as well as holiness has to be accompanied by. So he says, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them, meaning that before the harvest can come, <clears throat> the enemy choked it because of the sin, because of the plague because of the things that you're tossing it around. There are individuals in every one of our lives that are a thorn. You must identify that. You must identify the thorns. You must identify people that are thorns in your life. And people that are thorns in your life, you cannot talk about the things of God around them because they will choke it. They will kill it. They will kill what God has for you because they're thorns in your life. Then the Bible begins to say in verse 8, Matthew chapter 13, verse 8, but others fell into good ground. 
Here's the key here, good ground, placement, placement. Your growth is connected to where you are. A plant cannot just grow anywhere, it has to grow in the right type of conditions, your placement, where you are. The issue that the seed sower was having was not dealing with the seed, it was where he was putting the seed. You might be watching me and you might be saying, why am I going through this? Why am I not seeing the harvest? Why am I not seeing the benefits? Because you're throwing your seed in wrong ground. You might be in a wrong ministry. You might be in a wrong relationship. You might be around wrong people. You might be around an individual that's giving you wrong guidance. But you're putting your seed in the wrong ground. And when you're in the wrong ground, it doesn't matter how great the seed is. It doesn't matter how well the seed is. But when you're in the wrong ground, you won't reap a harvest. He begins to talk to us about our ground. He begins to talk to us about what's around us, our placement. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. If you're in the wrong placement, you'll still miss God. The story of the young prophet and the old prophet is a, pro is a story about placement. He was in a place that he had no business being in, and that's why he died prematurely. I want to believe God, and really, as I'm teaching this, I'm feeling something because there's people that's been doing the right things, but been doing, but it's been in the wrong place, and that's why you're stuck. You've been stuck, and you don't know why you're stuck because you're saying, I've sown good seed, I've done this right, I've done that right, I've been living right, but you're in the wrong location. <laughs> Remember, God made places before he made people. God focuses on places more than people. When Jesus Christ had to be born, notice this, God begins to begins to cause all this situation to take place. Caesar raises up taxes. They do this, they do that. Why? To get God in the right placement because he had to be in Bethlehem. Placement is very keen because anointings do not sit on people. They sit on your placement. They sit on where you are. The Bible says that when the disciples wanted to go towards Asia to preach the gospel, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit forbid them not to go. Why? Because it was the wrong place. It wasn't the right time. God is so keen on seasons and timing. He's so keen on it. I can't stress it more than, more than that. He's so keen on seasons and timing because where you are will determine how you get blessed. Where you are will determine what you're able to grow. Where you are will determine how God is going to be able to grow you. God might have called you to, to, to walk and to be a business owner, but you're in the wrong place, and so that's why you can't see it. <clears throat> So here he says, but others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. The key here is getting in right ground. Are you trying to birth something out, but you're in the wrong place? Are you trying to do something that the Lord called you to do, but you're in the wrong place? Are you trying to get your hands on something but you're in the wrong place. You're trying to birth something out in a place that's familiar, not understanding that God, anytime he, God does something with your faith and he calls you to push something out, he will always take you to an unfamiliar territory. You're trying to do something, and the reason why you have an issue with changing places is because you're so familiar with that place because once there was a time that God used that place to bless you, but now the same place that becomes the place that God blesses you is now the same place that becomes your imprison. I'm talking to someone because someone needs to break out of a place. If you stay where you are, you will not reap the fruit from the seed. I want to pray with you real quickly. I know that I, I feel a tremendous anointing on my body. I feel heat on my body. My hands are burning hot. I feel something because this message is getting to someone. It's touching someone. It's moving someone. Today, I want to pray not only for good seed because you have good seed. I'm talking to people that have good seed. I want to pray now that God puts you around the right soil for the seed, the right soil for the seed. Every seed has different type of soil. If God's given you a prophetic office, you have to go to a soil that deals with prophetic seed. If God's given you a seed for entrepreneurship, you have to go to a soil that deals with that. Father, I ask you right now, as I stretch my hands toward them, I want them to come in agreement and stretch your hands towards me. I ask you right now to place them around the right people, the right environment, the right place, the right placement of things so that they are able to grow, so that their seed will not be choked, nor will it, with, nor will it wither, 
nor will the sun burn it up, nor will it fall to the left side or the right side, but it shall be planted and rooted so that it can grow. This I pray in Jesus' name. If you just watch this, I want you to pray and say, God, show me the right people. Show me the right environment. Show me the right seed. And watch how he's going to show it to you. I love you. Bless you. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And if you have been blessed for, uh, by your experience or blessed by what you were watching or what you were able to hear, it's really simple. Subscribe. Subscribe to my channel so that you can be kept up to date and so that we do not break this prophetic connection. I love you.